opportunity ever comes to fruition. Do you, do you believe that college football is leaving a lot of money on the table with these bowl games? Because there are a lot of second-tier bowl games that teams go to, and then they have to buy tickets, X number of tickets at full price. The game's not a sellout. Uh, it's very expensive to take the team down. It's expensive for fans to go. Uh, and everybody goes to a bowl now. And the bowls make a tremendous amount of money. Yes, they say some of it goes to charity. I think that's a lot, that's somewhat overplayed. And so there, there's a lot that, that gets dumped a lot of cash that gets dumped on these bowls, as opposed to having a playoff and keeping the money. You yes. Agree or, yes. You, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to upset your bowl friends, but, I mean, doesn't it seem absurd that I read that? I'm going by that book I read about the yeah, uh, right. inside yeah. of BC or hate BC. Well, I mean, they, think, think about they it. keep the money. All right, think about it. Number one, football drives the economics of all of the you know big college athletic right. departments. Number two, every football game needs to kick off a lot of extra revenue to pay for the volleyball team and the swimming team. That's the way it works. And that's a good social compact, if you will, right? These football players playing today, both WV and Marshall guys, know that they're helping you know their friends on the rifle team or the swim team or the golf team. So every game has to you know kick off a bunch of revenue to pay for those the sports bowl games don't right they don't kick off any revenue most teams as you know as you just so eloquently stated lose money and that's that's not a good business model no why yeah why why well, do they, it well you you know, can, i mean i know this is being absurd but you could get another you could play i mean if you just had no rule you could play another home game and, and play whoever you want and and then take the team to disney world i mean you know and, and right. save money and, and, and have real fun yeah and have yeah. real fun and save money so it's it, this bowl thing to me is upside down i think it's just well, if you if you look at the history of the bulls they start and if the bulls die so what well, I mean, with no skin. I mean, really. Yeah. What? What? What do you? Well, the bulls started. Keep in mind why the bulls started. The bulls started in an era when uh, there was no air travel for the masses, right? So it was getting the schools up north to go out to Pasadena, California, New Orleans, Louisiana, and Miami, Florida, to play in a game. It was an exhibition match. Up into the 70s, I think the national champion was crowned by AP or UPI before the bowl season. Right? Mm -hmm. They were just exhibition matches. The kids just wanted to go somewhere fun and, you know, so the, the, the bowl system has developed, you know, on, on, on some unusual premises. Uh, but the reality is today there's too many bowls. Teams that go six and six really shouldn't go to a bowl. That's not a successful season at virtually all Division I schools. We wouldn't consider six and six a successful season, nor would we consider seven and five or maybe even eight and four. So, uh, there, there needs to be a, a real look at the Bulls, and I actually think that, that Mark Emmert, the new NCAA president, has that on his long list of things to do, uh, because it is, uh, you know, it's a situation where schools are losing money, and that's, that's just not acceptable when you have so few schools like us that are financially self-sufficient.